Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Frequency Splitter plugin in FL Studio. I'll show you what every control does, but also some good techniques for using it. So let's jump right in. I'm using FL Studio 20.8 and I have the mixer open, which is where you load the Frequency Splitter plugin. You can load this on any track and you can also load it inside Patcher. So I'll just open it up there. This plugin can be used on any audio source and it's designed to separate that source into either three or two frequency bands, low, mid, and high, or if I put it into dual band mode, just a low and a high band. But it's not just a regular EQ or filter because what this plugin lets you do is take those low, mid, and high bands and then send them to another channel in your mixer. So it makes all these parallel processing techniques that I've been showing you for years, it makes them a lot easier and a lot more accessible. And almost all of the other controls are simply deciding where you want the crossovers of these frequency bands to be, what steepness of slope do you want those crossovers to have, and then how much gain do you want to apply to each band, and of course, where you want to send it to. There are plenty of visualization modes down here, which I'll show you if I just play some audio. So right now there's a histogram, but for instance, you can have a heat map so that it's sort of more familiar if you're used to parametric EQ2. Uh, there's loads of other options for the histogram and heat map, but these are really personal. So I'll just keep it at the sort of default settings. Before we start sending audio around the mixer and getting into complicated stuff, let's just take a listen to these bands. So I'm just going to solo the low end and take a listen. So that was just a right click on this to solo the low end. And you can boost that band or cut it down. Let's go to the mid range, right click. And then the high range. We can change the crossover positions using these two controls here. So this is a very narrow range of frequencies. And then this brings in more top end. So a lot of this stuff is quite self-explanatory. You can choose different slopes so that it's a steeper crossover or a more gentle crossover. So the most basic way of using this plugin is as a simple three band equalizer. Just play some audio, just boost the top end or cut it down, boost the bass, cut it down. And then if I turn off the bands, you can see the global EQ curve that's been applied. But I know that's pretty boring, so I'm going to go on to a vocal example where we're going to start sending different bands of audio to different channels. We've looked at the main outputs, but now we have to go to the sends. And if I right click on any one of these, say the high band, all it shows is master for now. And that's because the frequency splitter, which I've loaded on my vocal channel here, is just connected to the master. So I need to set up sends to other channels. So this is when you need to think ahead and sort of know what you want to do. So I want a vocal reverb send. And in this case, I want a vocal high send. So I'm going to go onto my vocal channel, right click down here, side chain to this track, and then the same for the high send. Right now, if I press play, Would we get it right? there's only audio coming through the vocal channel, not the send channels yet. If I select the high band here, right click and send it to vocal high send. Now this top band of frequencies is being sent there. And even if I mute the original vocal, You can hear just those top frequencies. I've compressed them, saturated them, and de-essed them, and now I'd like to blend them back in with the original vocal. So let's try this. We learned to put aside all the bitterness and fight. So that sounds pretty good to me. It's just got a lot more air, and that's going to help it stand out against the piano in the mix. And this is blending in this new processed band with the original three bands. So if I wanted to, I could actually go to the main output and mute the high band so that I've, on, I've only got the original two bands here and then I've, I've got my process third band being added in but in this case I wanted the uh, normal vocal blended with uh, this other vocal sound as well. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the mid band and I'm going to send this to the vocal reverb. So now just the mid frequencies are being sent to the reverb which is what I want to do most of the time and let's take a listen. We learn to put aside all the bitterness and fight. We learn to put aside all the bitterness. Sounds good. And this takes me smoothly on to one of the most important features, which is the linear phase modes down here. 
So if you split a signal like this, you filter it off, send it to a new channel, process it and blend it back in. If you're using traditional filters, it's going to affect or interrupt the phase relationship of those two signals. At best, you're not going to hear much of a difference. And at worst, you're going to have phase cancellation. You know, elements of the low end are going to be canceling each other out and your signal is going to lose a lot of its integrity. But it's not always a problem. To deal with these potential phase issues, there's a linear phase mode. This adds latency to the plugin because it has to process ahead of time so that it can maintain an excellent phase relationship or even a perfect phase relationship. The different precision modes are not necessarily better or worse, as I'll demonstrate in just a moment with a few examples, but I think the higher ones just add more and more latency and are more precise. However, at this point, it would be wrong of me if I didn't explain some of the drawbacks of linear phase. Uh, because it is not a perfect solution to this problem and often I would prefer to use a tool like this in just regular uh, with the regular filter response but anyway I'll jump over to that example and uh, show you what I mean this is not a criticism of this plugin I think this plugin actually handles it quite well this is just an issue with all linear phase filters as far as I'm aware so with no processing I have this 808 sampled kick that I sampled myself sounds like this straight from my drum machine, simple, very predictable. What I will do is just solo the mid band. So this is gonna be quite an extreme example to try and show you the sound of this. And I'm gonna filter out the top and bottom of the kick until it just sounds like this. Just gonna press F9 to open the mixer and I'm going to quickly render this out. Alt R, recorded, perfect. I'm gonna keep that muted and now I'm gonna turn on linear phase mode and I'm gonna put it in the highest precision. And again, I'm just gonna record this out. And I'll also put it in one of the medium precision modes just to show a little bit of everything. Let's record that one out as well. In green, we have the low latency filter, so not linear phase. Then we have the red, highest quality linear phase, medium in orange. Let's take a quick listen. I never know how these audio samples sound on YouTube until after I upload the video, but they sound vastly different to me. And if I zoom in on them, you can see that they look dramatically different as well. So the low latency sample just starts there and you hear it like this. Whereas if I look at the highest quality linear phase, we have this audio before it even starts. And this is called pre-ringing and it's an artifact common to linear phase filtering. It just doesn't sound good at all. It completely destroys the integrity of the sound in my opinion. So it's sort of got like a bit of a reverse going up into it almost. That's what it sounds like. So if I go to the medium quality, it doesn't have as much pre-ringing, but it sounds dramatically different from the low latency version. So the point I'm trying to make here is that sometimes doing everything you can to maintain the phase relationship of audio is not actually the best route to go down. And at least in my opinion, for what it's worth, I think that pre-ringing and the other artifacts caused by linear phase filtering are much more obvious and sound much worse than the slight changes in phase relationship between audio, which most of the time are barely perceptible and uh, if you do hear them, you can usually do things to correct those. So the point I'm making is use linear phase if you know you need it, but don't just click on the highest quality linear phase, hoping that it will definitely give you the best sound. To learn a lot more about linear phase filters and the potential problems they can cause, I'd recommend a video by Dan Worrell, which I will link in the description of this YouTube channel. He covers it in immense detail for anyone who's curious. But let's get back to this plugin. So keeping that example in mind, what I would recommend you do is that if you are processing with this, just print out a couple of different uh, versions with different settings and just compare them mainly with your ears, but also visually see if it uh, induces any problems because uh, overall, this plugin has been nothing but good for me. It's brilliant for my workflow. It's excellent for the way I mix, the way I uh, master audio. It just opens up a ton more possibilities. It's something I wish, you know, existed five or six years ago in the software. So that's it for this video, but do comment down below how you'd like to use this plugin or if there's any tutorials you think I should make specific to this plugin. And also I wanted to mention that I'm starting live streaming for channel members only. 
So if you want to become a channel member, just check in the description. There's some more information about that. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great week, and I hope to see you in the next one too. Bye for now.